It's the Mike Francesa Podcast on the Bet Rivers Network. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the Mike Francesa Podcast. As we wrap up Divisional Weekend and look ahead to the Final Four, to Championship Sunday next week, where it will be Kansas City at Baltimore, followed by Detroit at San Francisco. So both number one seeds are here. You have uh, the three seed in Kansas City, just comes off the win against Buffalo, and the uh, three seed in Detroit, which got to play a home game this week because of the fact that Dallas didn't get the job done against the Packers. Uh, uh, Interesting football on Sunday. Uh, Let's start with the first game where it was 10-10 at half. And Tampa Bay had some chances early in the second half to take the lead. They didn't do it. Then they chased Detroit the rest of the game. But really where that game unfolded was when – and. Tampa had a couple of guys go out injured in the game, but when they lost Dean at corner and had to replace him with Zion McCollum, they picked on McCollum every single play. And on that drive, he got toasted and then got toasted and got toasted again and got toasted for the touchdown. And let's be honest, sometimes that's all it takes. You take a corner out of the game who hasn't given up anything. They haven't been able to attack. They attacked in the middle of the field. And then when McCollum came in, they attacked on the corner. They attacked wherever he was. If he was in the slot, they attacked him there. They attacked him wherever he covered. And frankly, he wasn't up to the challenge. And that was the difference. Now, Mayfield, I thought, did some very good things. He got the ball down the field. He got the ball down the field to Evans for some big, big plays in the game. Uh, Evans had a very good day today. Um, And Mayfield, 26 of 41 for 349 and three touchdowns. Yes, down 80 through a pick late that was picked off by a linebacker who slid underneath as he tried to hit the tight end across the middle early with a minute left down eight. They went for two after they scored. That's become a prevailing thing now. I'm not in love with it. But I tell you, they, I, I, I get the premise of it, but that's happened a lot now. When you're down 14 and you score, you go for two there, and then you, if you score, you're only down six. It's about a 55% play to get the two-point conversion. So they figure you don't get it the first time, you get it the second time. I understand that's playing into uh, the new math, playing into the new way people think about things. But the bottom line is uh, we can debate that. They didn't score there. They didn't get the two-point conversion. They did get the ball back down eight and had a chance, but then Mayfield threw his second pick of the day. The first pick was not his fault. It was a ball that Evans, uh, on the first target of the game, uh, batted up in the air, and it was picked off. It was not Mayfield's fault at all. I thought Mayfield did some very gutty things. Um, The difference in the game was a couple of things. One... Tampa couldn't get a conventional pass rush on Goff while they got pressure on Mayfield. Number two, Detroit took advantage of the middle of the field, especially after a couple of injuries to safeties for uh, for Tampa, even before the uh, injury to Dean. The bottom line was they just carved them up in the middle of the field and scored three times in a row in that second half to break that game open. Tampa tried the match, couldn't score as many times, fell one touchdown and an extra point short, and wound up losing the game by eight. So Detroit, which a couple of years ago was trying to dig out, found a coach in Campbell that they could believe in. He promised that he would turn things around. He has, give him credit. Now they get to play a championship game. They're a touchdown underdog to San Francisco, as you would expect. And they won't be expected to go out there. But, hey, here's Detroit, which has been anything but a fixture in the postseason. They have been a stranger to the postseason. Here they are after two wins at home with their fans going absolutely berserk. Now they get a chance to play in the NFC title game 
and get the dream, the dream that they are one game away. It's going to be a tough game. Now, they're going to have some positive thoughts because, let's be honest, Green Bay outplayed San Francisco last night. Green Bay should have beaten San Francisco. They missed a 41-yard field goal, which came back to haunt them, and San Francisco got the late touchdown. But let's be honest, Green Bay could have easily won that game. If you go soup the nuts for the entire game, they outplayed San Francisco. San Francisco is lucky to be standing today, but they are standing, and they deserve to be a seven-point favorite, and it will be very tough for that team. That Green Bay offense, I mean, that Detroit offense is going to score some points, but that Detroit defense is going to have a very, very tough time with the San Francisco offense. And if they get a dry day, that's going to help Purdy a lot. He doesn't throw a good wet ball. They come off a game where they didn't play well. That probably won't happen again. And uh, it's going to be a very, very tough chore. But Detroit gets a chance to do it. They wouldn't want to be anywhere else except in San Francisco next week, hoping to see if they could finally, finally do something that has been dreamt about in the Motor City forever, and that is getting to a Super Bowl. They have never been there. They've only been to a championship game, an NFC title game, once uh, in, in, in the last three decades. I mean, so the bottom line is they have never been close. Now here they are one step away. We got to the second game, and we got everything we expected. But the game took a weird turn. After 13-10, we just watched as it was your score, I score, you score, I score, and it looked like we were going to finish up that way, and then we got off schedule. They held the bills. Kansas City did. Buffalo shocked the world by trying to go for a fake punt. It doesn't work. Short field for Kansas City. They fumbled the ball out of the end zone as they're going in to break the game open. Now it still stays a three-point game, and it looks like Buffalo is in a very solid position. Two minutes left. They're in field goal range, and you're figuring, okay, they can maybe get this game down inside the 10-yard line where you have to deal with Allen running the ball in, which he's done two times already in the game today, and where they have the game-tying touchdown will send the game into overtime in their back pocket. You're going to have to watch to see if Kansas City is going to call timeouts and leave some time on the clock to give them a chance either at 27 up or if Buffalo scores a chance to get back and see if they can pull off a miracle. The bottom line is it was puzzling from there. I was very surprised by the plays that the Bills ran. Okay, I really was. They got the first down. On third down, He gets the first down, and then they run the ball. Okay, you understand that. They ran the ball at 242, and then they say, we're taking it to the two-minute warning. Kansas City allows them to take it to the two-minute warning. Now it is second and nine on the 26-yard line. All right? 43, 44-yard field goal right there. Makeable, yes. Automatic in this weather, no. Automatic with their kicker, no. Before the game, we touched on three things. Buffalo's banged up defense. Edge Reed over the Buffalo coaching staff. Edge Kansas City kicking game big over the Buffalo kicking game, which last week had a kick blocked that kept Pittsburgh in the game. Missed the chip shot field goal late in the game on three tries and then lines up. For a 44-yarder, their coaching staff said, hey, he will make it. Bass will make it when he has to make it. Well, on second down, he went for Shakir in the end zone. I was surprised that he went for such a long pass play. He tried to get Shakir on a crosser in the end zone. He bounced the ball short. Then on third down, they came after him. He rolled to the right, and as he went out of bounds, he tried to fire one into the corner of the end zone, which bounced away, and now it was up to Bass. With 147 on the clock, with each team still having two timeouts, 
it was up for Bass now to come up and kick that field goal that their coaching staff believed he was going to make when the game was on the line. And they watched as it sailed right and with it sailed their dreams. Now, they weren't dead yet because they had two timeouts. So Kansas City was going to have to get a first down or kick the ball back. And that hard-running Pacheco, who had a 97-yard day on the ground today, 15 carries for 97. That's six and a half a carry if you keep in score. He got eight yards. Buffalo called timeout knowing that they were probably done. Pacheco rammed the next one up the middle for three. And Buffalo started to realize that their chance to go to the AFC title game and beat the Chiefs was going to have to wait for another year. This confrontation with these two teams, which is so close. I talked about it before the game. Five. I thought if they played 10 times, it'd be 5-5. Five, five. Hey, at one point in their last six games, they were tied 179, 179 in points. They can't be any closer. Every game seems to come down to the last second or the last play. This time it comes down to a missed field goal and then running out the clock. And Kansas City, which has now built a dynasty under Andy Reid, is back in the AFC title game and one step away from a fourth Super Bowl visit in the Reid era. They've won two out of three. They are defending champs. And now they are a trip to Baltimore away from going to another Super Bowl where they will see either San Francisco or Detroit if they're able to keep Jackson and the Ravens out of the Super Bowl. Now, the Ravens ran the ball yesterday for 230 yards. A lot of that in the second half is they completely dominated the second half of the game yesterday against Houston. Today, Buffalo ran the ball well on the Bills, especially, especially in the first half. The Bills did a much better job against it in the second half, but the Bills rushed for 182 yards today. But Kansas City rushed for 146 against that beat-up defense. Now, I never saw a game more than guys going to the sideline after every play. It seemed like a player was getting injured or banged up on almost every play in the game today, whether it was offensive guys, defensive guys. It seemed like a conveyor belt, the guys going down, play after play after play. Everybody who got tackled got, seemed to get up slowly. Everybody was holding something. Everybody seemed to be hurt. But these two terrific teams, led by brilliant quarterbacks. Mahomes has had the better of these games. He obviously already has two rings. He's undefeated in this round. He's now won a playoff game on the road. He did play that game in Tampa, which was, you want to call it a home neutral. It's not exactly a home game, but this was his first legitimate home game in the AFC playoffs, and he wins it. He had a solid day today, not a brilliant day, but Kansas City often does enough. Today, they got a performance like they used to get out of Kelsey. Five catches, 75 yards, two touchdowns. They got some big catches out of Rice. They got a couple of big catches out of Valdez Scantling, who has dropped the ball so many times this year. They got 97 yards out of Pacheco on 15 carries. They got 31 yards out of Edward Zolaire on two carries and a couple of good plays from him in blitz pickup. They got some plays on defense when they were banged up. Gay went out hurt. Edwards went out hurt. At different times, Different players went out hurt and came back in. They got banged up a little bit in this game today, and they were pushed by this Buffalo team. 
and by the running of Josh Allen, who today ran in the first half for big yardage. He ran for 51 yards and two touchdowns in the first half. He wound up with 72. He didn't kill them with the running game in the second half. They didn't kill the Chiefs with the running game in the second half. And the Chief defense stiffened in the final 10 minutes of the game. And it stiffened on that final drive where they could have easily lost. They were one play away from losing command of that game and maybe losing that game. Allen had digs underneath on second down when he went for Shakir in the end zone. He had Allen on a crosser. He had digs on a crosser that would have been good for 10 or 15 yards and a first down and made it a very much a chip shot field goal. This was not a chip shot field goal they wound up with. They took two throws deep. The first one, they were looking to score. The second one was kind of out of desperation. It was going nowhere. It was just to make sure that he didn't get sacked and make the field goal impossible. Now, in this league, wind, no wind, cold, no cold, you're supposed to make a 44-yard field goal with your team three points behind in a playoff game. If you don't do that, you're going to spend the offseason with your head down and basically apologizing to your teammates because your job is to make that field goal. They didn't ask you to make a 55-yarder. They asked you to make a 44-yarder. And in this era of the NFL, 44-yard field goals are supposed to get made no matter what the conditions are. That is a miss that can't happen. But a miss it was followed up by the Chiefs getting 11 yards when they needed 10 out of Pacheco and the Kansas City Chiefs, who have become fixtures in these AFC playoffs year after year after year. What Andy Reid and Mahomes have carved out has been brilliant. It follows the Patriot dynasty, but it is, it is nothing short now of a dynasty year after year after year. And if it tacks a third Super Bowl championship on that resume, it would be one of the impressive, impressive runs in NFL history. They've won two of three in recent years. And another trip would be very special. Hey, they have a tough game to win next week. There's no question about it. Baltimore and their quarterback have waited a long time for this. They have waited to get there. They wanted to come up with that big win. They came up with that win. And now here they are. The Ravens have been installed as three and a half point favorites. You can understand that. They were the better team this season. They won more games. The Chiefs didn't finish well during the regular season. They kind of stumbled home. Their offense wasn't working right. Their offensive line wasn't working right. Their tackles were suspect. They were dropping balls. But I'll tell you, they've looked better on offense the last couple of weeks. And today, they looked better on offense than they have in a while. And Kelsey looked like Kelsey. And the running game was proficient. You sprinkle in Rice and everybody else, and all of a sudden, you have a Kansas City team, when you look at their defense and look at their kicking game, has the ability to beat anybody. They just went to Buffalo and win against a hot team, a team that a lot of people thought had a chance to run the table and win the whole thing. Listen, everyone knew that Kansas City or Buffalo would have a decent shot, even a good shot, to beat the Ravens. Yes, the Ravens have earned that one seed this year. They're a good team. They're a good team on defense. They're an explosive team on offense. They have a powerful running game. They have a good offensive line. They have a quarterback who can be very hard to handle. But nobody, nobody brings more to the game than the Kansas City quarterback. And he already has been there, done that. 
to where Jackson wants to go and where he dreams of going. So now, after a Detroit win in which, hey, Tampa Bay had their moments, and a Kansas City win in Buffalo as the Bills and their brilliant quarterback and their talented team and their wonderful fans have their heart broken again and have to wait another year to think about getting that championship. Not easy to do. It's a great scene there in that city. It's a great fan base there in that city. They brave a lot of elements. They love their football team. My son Jack, his roommate in college, is a Buffalo Bills guy. So I got him a couple of tickets for the game, and he texted me that it was And he's been to a lot of stadiums. He's been to a lot of games. He said, Dad, this scene here at this place today is amazing. He said, it is unbelievable, the scene here in Buffalo. I've never been to a Bills home game. Not too many I've missed, but I've never been there. And he texted me today and said, this is an amazing scene in the stadium today. And again, the Bills fans who worship their team go home with their hearts broken. Allen, who is such a big star in this league and probably as popular as any player in this league. Everybody you talk to loves the guy. But he has to wait another year. So kudos to Andy Reid and Mahomes and Kelsey and all the Chiefs for what they accomplished today. And kudos to the Lions for getting there and building this and what Campbell has built in Detroit and what Goff has done and what those young, talented Lions have done. So now Kansas City and Baltimore, the Ravens three-and-a-half-point favorites, Detroit at San Francisco, the Niners solid seven-point favorites, the one seed still alive, a very, very live team in Kansas City. A clash of the Titans there. Ravens deserve to be called the Titans this year, and Kansas City deserves to be called that every year. Detroit is the long shot of the four, of the final four teams. Nobody'd be surprised if the Kansas City Baltimore winner wins the Super Bowl. Nobody'd be surprised if San Francisco wins the Super Bowl. You would be surprised if Detroit won these final two games and won the Super Bowl. The other three teams would be no surprise to anybody. Kansas City, obviously, would be a surprise to nobody. It was not a surprise today or anything else. In this divisional playoff round, yesterday I picked use I picked Baltimore. I picked I picked uh, Green Bay. I picked Tampa today, getting six six and a half, and I picked Kansas City. So three and one, four and two last week, seven and three for the playoffs. Would have liked to see Tampa come down and take that game down to a two point conversion. They fell a little short of that mark. And although I picked Kansas City. I was kind of rooting for overtime because I didn't want to see the game in. I wanted to see some more football with those two because I tell you, it's a pleasure to watch. It really is. It's a pleasure to watch those two play football and to watch those two quarterbacks play in those games against each other. It's really a treat. They don't disappoint. They didn't disappoint today. So, The NFL season now boils down to three games. Championship Sunday next week, 3 o'clock and 6.30. No more Saturday games. Just three games left on the year. Three and six next week, and then two weeks later, a Super Bowl in, of all places, Vegas. That's what's left in this NFL season. We should get some more news about coaches this week and... Coaching vacancies being filled this week. We'll keep you abreast of that and everything else. It'll be a busy week. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Mike Francesa podcast on the Bet Rivers Network.